Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday Q&A. Um, Sorry, I was a little under the weather. Yeah. And uh, also preparing for the big event oh, this weekend. Oh, huge. So uh, for those of you who don't know, we do this Q&A. Typically every Tuesday, live, I ask our questions from you guys at questions at itmtrading.com. That's where you can send them to. And then, so she hasn't seen any of these questions, these questions, so you get a live, like real organic, true response. Yeah. Nothing's rehearsed. So, um, although <laughs> I did want to say, we did see a lot of your guys' comments about the intro music being too loud compared to the volume of us. So we attempted to modify that today. Hopefully it worked. Let us know in the comments if you did notice that it was more even, okay? Um, and that'll help us out to adjust it in the future if we need to. Um, all right. Okay. <clears throat> so Philip J said, you said there will t come a time to invest in the stock market. Mm -hmm. You also said gold performs better than the stock market overall. Why not just invest in gold and forget about the stock market forever? Well, for a portion of the portfolio, that makes absolute sense. Uh, and, you know, you have to understand what the, the, the point of gold is. You should always have that in your portfolio. What will vary is kind of dependent upon the trend cycle. So it wouldn't be horrible if you did that. That'd be absolutely just fine. Meaning if you had a portion of your portfolio always All in, in gold? gold. Absolutely, because I do. Yeah. And I always will. Right. But you also want to be able to take advantage of the different opportunities that present. Right, because you're not saying stocks are bad. You're no. just saying it's about the timing. Well, <clears throat> I mean, at the moment, you want to know the truth? I yeah. do think stocks are bad because well, they're cause, severely yeah, overvalued and they're completely convoluted with all mm -hmm. of the derivatives. It is not a pure play. There is no good price discovery. So at this juncture, yeah, I'm sorry, but I do think that stocks are bad. I don't own any. And I thought it was interesting. I was reading a piece today on um, buybacks and oh. how now... Uh, I think they said Apple did a hundred billion dollars in buybacks oh, last yeah. year and how that that's what's kind of kept the market going and kept it inflated. And now Congress is supposedly going to introduce some kind of legislation to uh, mitigate the buybacks because it only makes the, the elites inside the company more money in the, and it and it messes with true price discovery. Shocker. There's no way they passed that though. Come on. Of course not. Well, look, that was in Dodd-Frank. <clears throat> so that was, that was legislated in 2010. Did anything happen with that? No. Don't you remember the SEC article that came out and saying that the buybacks are used to hide the selling of the insiders and, and all of this. And he even referenced the uh, part in the Dodd-Frank Act that was supposed to not necessarily get rid of it, but at least mm -hmm. eliminate part of it so it wasn't so much financial engineering. And of course, that particular part of the bailing got in place. But that part of the Dodd-Frank? Yeah, of course not. Of course not. Yeah. And then they, of course, then they took it out and now Congress is talking about it again. It's a joke. Mm -hmm. Okay, John C. says, so why not QE to infinity? Fed mm -hmm. doesn't seem too worried about the astronomical debt that has been accumulated so far. Markets are supported by QE and they keep rising. QE to infinity, new normal? <clears throat> well, QE to infinity, not permanent new normal, but as we're going into hyperinflation, absolutely we're going to see them because they, no they have no other tool. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you look at the gold purchases of central banks since the crisis... And you look at it before the crisis, central banks are buying gold hand over fist. In fact, uh, uh, through 2018, the final numbers just recently came out, 74% increase year over year at the highest level, central banks globally at the highest level of purchasing gold since Nixon <laughs> handed over the full power to the hmm. central banks to control inflation. Wow. The second highest in history, lower only to Bretton Woods when we promised to hold the dollar's value to gold at $35 an ounce. Hmm. Why in the world would they, central banks, be buying gold? They state quite clearly, it's a portfolio diversifier and a flight to safety. Yeah, they're hedging. Oh, you think? Okay, so <laughs> yeah. Mike says, asks, 
<clears throat> Although I'm not opposed to owning gold, I'm concerned that there, if there is a financial reset and the dollar becomes devalued or worthless, then how do you price gold in silver and silver if the dollar is worthless? Well, it's worth what you convert it into. A basket of strawberries for a dime, a piece of real estate for gold, or when the markets and all that inflation is, is burned off and we know who's going to survive this mess and we see the accumulation pattern. I mean, that's true with any of the income producing assets. Then you convert some of your gold holdings into those other assets. But, or the new currency after the, everything's uh, fizzled off. Yes. You know, and I used to think that I would convert more of my gold holdings into the new currency. <clears throat> but that was before I really saw the handwriting on the wall for them going um, digital. And it's so much easier. If you have no possession of it, it's so much easier to invisibly take your wealth. So, but, but yeah, absolutely. Digital and cashless, so, right? Absolutely. So um, I'll be holding a much, much larger percentage of my holdings in gold even after the conversion. And then if I need it, I can convert it. Well, you always have options. Exactly. Exactly. Good point. Okay. So Bonnie J, <clears throat> you mentioned the value of gold should be measured in debt and that all currency notes, et cetera, are debt based. What mm -hmm. kind of debt are you referring to? for the measurement? Well, that's a good question. And it's actually all debt because in the current system that you can use the debt as a proxy for all of the, in this country, dollars, but euros and yen for all the fiat money that's been created. That's how it's created. So um, yeah, you would actually use all of the debt to determine the true fundamental value of an ounce of gold. And you use the, uh, tell them where you get your, because there's a, um, well, a website that you use to find, to get like a rough estimate of what the total debt of the world is, right? Well, <clears throat> world debt. It's not the total. It's just the public debt. And I go on to, you know, I think it's the debtclock.org and it gives you that blanket number, but that's actually about a third of the true debt. If you really want to know what the true debt is, then you have to go to, you know, the federated, you have, you have to go a whole bunch of places, but the IMF and the BIS and those guys, once a year, they'll come out with a report on the total global debt. So if you want it more accurate, then you go to there. But, um, it's typically about three times the size of what you get at the debt clock. But, you but that's use easy. That number on the debt clock and then you divide it by the total number of ounces and it gives you the fundamental value. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I can say it's very conservative because it doesn't really take into account all of the debt. And it doesn't take in either case, it also does not take into account any entitlements mm -hmm. because they don't have to give you them. Right. Okay. So Rod G asks, do you think that the Australian economy will go exactly the same way as the U S in the near future, such as losing our Australian fiat currency? I think all fiat, this is a global reset. So I think all fiat currencies will go the same way and uh, they, they won't necessarily all hyperinflate at the same time as we're seeing in Brazil and in Venezuela and, and Turkey. I mean, there's certainly countries that are a bit ahead of us, but I do think that all developed countries will most likely reset within a specific uh, you know, period of time, because it has to be catastrophic enough for us to accept what they intend to uh, push us through. And the other thing about Australia is how closely tied it is to China. So I think that, um, that if you want to see the speed of the deterioration, it's probably more similar to what's going on in China than the U.S. because they're so, you know, exports, imports, um, everything is just a lot more closer between Australia and China. Okay. This is an interesting question. Robert J asks, why doesn't my financial advisor recommend physical gold? Good question. You know, uh, when I became you were a financial advisor, th that's exactly where I was going, uh, for Shearson. That was my alma mater, at least to start with. And I went there cause they had the best training program on the street. What they taught me 
how to do was to sell an intangible product. And that's why you won't get a financial advisor typically, I mean, some do, but you won't get them typically re recommending physical gold because key is they don't make any money on that. Right, and typically they're gonna sell in-house products anyway, right? Unless they're a, a registered investment advisor or fiduciary, they're gonna recommend they're, their in-house products. They're pretty much always going to recommend whoever it is that they're aligned with, but it's all gonna be fiat because that's the training. Mm -hmm. And that's where, that's how they make their money. And even, you know, if you do something like a mutual fund or perhaps an ETF, I'm not sure on that because they weren't around when I was a broker, but um, you get residuals. As long as you hold that in that fund, well, every month I got paid on it. Right. And every time they do transactions, there's fees and everything like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And lots of hidden fees. But also at gold, it should be thought of as an insurance policy, right? And so Correct. You, you don't, they're not going to be selling insurance policies typically with, and I mean this from like a hedge your dollar investments with a gold product, a physical gold product. Right. They'll do GLD. Right. Right. Or Which some kind of gold ETF, but mm. then they can make money off of that. And, and they don't really understand. I mean, truthfully, I've met almost, I've met a couple, but I've not really met too many stockbrokers that understand how money is created and, and supported in these systems or even what the fundamental value of the crap that they're selling people is. They, they don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, the wholesalers bring in lunch and wine and dine you and then Wall Street, you know, New York is going sell, sell, sell and you're rocking and rolling and... Right. Yeah, I got a call. I, I don't know if you experienced this, but I got a call from a Chase private banker mm. the other day. <clears throat> yeah. And I said, well, why are you calling me? Right. And of course, what he wanted, he wanted me to put my my money into their products. Yeah. I said, take me off your list. And you might want to do a little bit more due diligence on who you're calling before you do that. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was the really funny. anti-chase private client. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. What else do we have here? Uh, okay. Valerie Ritchie, will revaluation of our current currency occur before the new system or vice versa? Oh, it has to occur before the new the new system because you've got to be scared enough to accept the new system. So it, it occurs before the, you know, there'll be a little bit of, of crossover because you can't just go from this to that. But the garbage in the old system must be burned off and you must be scared enough and then you will go, then you'll accept, or at least in theory, hopefully not, hopefully you'll listen to us enough and there'll be enough people to say, uh, no, uh, and retain your choices. But yeah, you've got to burn off the garbage of the old system before you can go into the new. Um, let's see. A college kid asks, when the reset comes, how do numismatic coins hold numismatic value versus gold's weight value? Well, that's a really good question. A uh, part of it is presuming the possibility of confiscation of monetary gold because mm -hmm. that's pretty typical. They don't want you to hold your wealth. Well, and it's, we've we've pondered this too in the past together, which is especially if they go the route we think they do are going to, which is go cashless. Correct. And then go negative interest rates. Oh, yeah, exactly. Right, to force you to spend. Well, then the flight to safety to gold looks even better. So it would make sense at that point to block our ability to own it, right? Yes. Um, although... Obviously, that's speculation on our part, but that's what we believe. Right. And um, if you look at when and how that's happened, like in Venezuela, <laughs> they did the confiscation in 2011. The hyperinflation, the breakdown, started to become more apparent by 2012. So, so it's not that things weren't happening before that, but they try and do the confiscation um, before you really realize what the heck is happening. So part of the challenge with that or not, it's not really a challenge. If you're sitting on the only kind of gold that you can legally have and legally use inside of the system, what is that premium worth? 
Right. And then if you're looking at, because there's a whole bunch of different, you know, factors that go into the quality and rarity, not the content, the content's the same, um, then there are different coins for that are most likely to perform different functions a whole lot better. So it depends on what you're trying to accomplish, but that's how the numismatic coins would hold their value and most likely command a pretty big premium if you now have the only kind of gold that you can hold. And that's because demand, if you think about supply and demand, there's a limited supply. And if that does occur, then demand will spike, which would then make the premiums go higher because naturally prices rise when demand rises. You know, <clears throat> Part of, and this was in a question, and you just kind of said it too, if this happens. The reality is, it is happening. Mm -hmm. It has oh, been in, happening. The, the reset. confiscation Oh, the part. confiscation. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Sorry about that. But they did say it in the thing, if the reset happens. Inflation is constantly resetting the value of your currency. Because mm -hmm. that's its most important function. That's what it's designed to do. Gold and silver, gold particularly, is specifically designed to hold value. That's why they suppress the price. So you don't really understand what's happening in the fiat world. They just show you numbers. Oh, the stock market goes up. Oh, your portfolio goes up in terms of numbers. But what about the value in how it is priced? So even when people ask, well, how would they price it? Your assumption is that the dollar will matter. And I'll tell you right now, in the height of that reset, I'm not changing my gold into dollars unless I want those dollars or need those dollars to pay off my mortgage. Or to do something at that very moment in time. That I need right, to have right dollars with. Correct. You're not going to hold that because then this is going to continue. It's rapid loss of value. Exactly. Right? Yeah. The only difference between <clears throat> inflation and hyperinflation is the speed of the inflation. But the bottom line result is the same. We have less than four cents worth of purchasing power officially in our dollar. From the original 1913 dollar when the Fed took over. Exactly. All right. Well, do we, are we doing anything else this week? I know because you, you have we, the event, so I don't think you're going on air with anything, right? No. I, well, I am going to, uh, kind of, kind of depends. I, I may be prepared to go on air tomorrow. Maybe. Okay. M maybe. Don't hold your breath. But, but I got to tell you that I, without a doubt, <clears throat> what I have for this weekend is the best work I have ever done in my life. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited about I'm really excited about it. So I'm I'm excited to meet all the people that are coming and have the time to really show them this, although there's a lot of information there. Yeah, for sure. All right. So and then I know we were supposed to be on with Gregory Manorino. Do we know when that's happening? No? No. To be rescheduled? Okay. The event has kind of obviously put a little break on a lot of the stuff we're working on because she's been working on that almost exclusively. Oh, so nonstop. So we'll see you guys for sure. We'll see you guys next week with a Q and a on Tuesday. If, uh, if not, maybe we see you sometime this week with something out from Lynette. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. But if not, we'll see you next week. Okay. And so please remember that shields are made of metal, not paper or promises. And until next we meet, please be careful out there. Bye-bye.